Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Primesberger, editor of eWeek. Thanks for joining us today on this segment of eWeek eSpeaks. Our interviewee today is the new, brand new CEO of LogDNA. His name is Tucker Calloway. Tucker, welcome to eSpeaks. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Yeah, this must be a fun time for you moving up to the CEO position. You haven't done this before at companies. Um, uh, are you uh, are you overwhelmed or are you uh, excited about doing this? Or uh, I, I think the yeah the phrase I've been using is exhilarated. I think that's a uh, you know some combination of uh, reflecting that you're learning quite a bit, but you're also very excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, tell me a little bit about your background. Where were you before? Yeah, so I, I've spent the last eight years or so um, in sales roles and in, in the DevOps space. So. Um, some of the most formative companies I was with along that journey was um, Chef Software, as well as Sauce Labs, where I, where I essentially ran the sales and customer success teams. Prior to that, though, if you if you rewind all the way back, um, I was actually a computer science major at Cal. Um, and so I started very much on the technical side, moving my way through technical implementations and sales engineering roles before I moved into sales. So, um, so you know, looking at the entire company is, is, is fun for me because I've you know, I've had some right, varied experiences in the past. Yeah, uh, I, I I detect a theme. You were with Chef and Sauce. I think that's from yeah. Sauce Labs. Yes. So are you a are you a cook yourself or what? Yeah, yeah that's funny. So this is the first time I haven't really had a, 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 a some kind of kitchen reference, I suppose. But no, <laughs> it's more the theme is actually more on DevOps than it is on uh, than it is on cooking. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. How about telling me a little bit about Log DNA? What uh, what service does it provide? What problem does it solve? And why should companies be looking at it? Yeah, so we're um, we're Log DNA is a centralized log management platform. Our our focus is empowering um, DevOps teams to take control of their data, you know, get insights out of it, and um, and basically we're built on Kubernetes, and so we're really focused on. Um, I'm catering to those users that are, um, are modern development teams implementing modern technologies. As the world of DevOps and Agile have changed the way people work, so too must the, the, the tools that they use to support their work change. And so that's, that's kind of the focus of LogDNA. Okay. Is it a, a cloud service or is it a, an app that can be run on a server or both or what? A little bit of each. Yeah, we're based on Kubernetes. So, uh, so we do operate in our cloud. We do operate uh, very heavily in IBM's cloud. We're actually the logging solution that provide that powers the entire IBM cloud. Um, and so we have, we have both those options, both on premise as well as uh, in the cloud. Yeah, I was going to ask you who your customers are, and IBM is a fairly major one there. Yeah, they've been, they've been, uh, they've been a great customer. We do a lot with them internally and we do a lot to power their customers too so they're doing a lot of really interesting things with really large enterprise customers and so we've been very honored to play a big role with ibm and in that process of, of, of moving transactions online moving their customers to the cloud very cool tell me about your plans um you know new in this job um wh what do you see for the for log dna for the next 12 to 24 months that we should know yeah, no, it's an interesting question. I, I think there's a lot happening in the space uh, too, and so we've, that's you know basically the first question I've asked myself in the new role is is how do we think about that? If I take a step way back, you know we're we're fundamentally about driving developer productivity, and if you think about what that really means, that's really about getting ideas like the business's ideas into customers' hands, and so th that is the focus that we have. And enterprises are increasingly selecting new technologies to deliver those ideas to their customers. And they're adopting agile and DevOps principles, you know, at, a, at an increasing rate um, in order to facilitate that too. And so we see a clear opportunity in that intersection of enterprise DevOps and log management. And we think that there's some unmet demand there today. There's unmet, um, uh, you know, capabilities that people require in order to do this effectively at an enterprise scale. Okay. How does um, how does one use log DNA? Can you give me an example of a use case? I mean, obviously IBM is one, but could you kind of drill down a little bit about how it's used on a daily basis? Yeah, so I, you know, I think so. It's it's used by DevOps teams, and if I were to break down the the core use cases, they really fall into uh, monitoring and debugging, uh, troubleshooting, business analytics, and then and then uh, to some extent security and compliance. Although security and compliance has been less of a focus of ours relative to troubleshooting, debugging, and monitoring. 
Okay, so the so I assume then that the debugging and the monitoring involves um, um, apps that have AI and machine learning in them too, or what? Yeah, that's right. And what what we really find though is is that uh, the, these customers of ours or the people that are in the DevOps area, they're not really they're not struggling to get more data. They're struggling to make sense of data, right? And so that there's plenty of data that's provided to them, but how do they make sense of that data? And how do they create great log management strategies and practices, given all the other pressures that they have, um, is 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 the problem that we that we aim to solve for them or that we solve for them. So again, they don't lack uh, data. Combining it in a dashboard and things like that isn't actually the thing that they need most. They need to find ways to get value out of the data they have. And then the other challenge that they that they face in facilitating those use cases is that that essentially. This, as this work style has changed from you know, what was more traditional operations into the DevOps, the way that people consume tools has changed too. And so the, the more authoritative approaches that exist in the market today or approaches that are just focused on providing a cheaper service aren't actually meeting the needs of these DevOps engineers. Mm -hmm. And what they need uh, and what enterprises need is the ability to provide a solution that could be consumed by many organizations and people that are wearing many hats versus the traditional way would be like you have someone who is a, a, a core log management person. Like they spend their, all their days thinking about log management as people have moved to more product aligned, more agile based uh, development teams, their need to interface with multiple disciplines has increased. And so the tools must, must, you know, have the capabilities to present the information in the way that those people work. Yeah, it sounds to me that the DevOps uh, movement, whatever it is, or initiative or trend, yeah, is growing a lot. And I think it sounds like it's growing a lot with younger companies too that are coming up. Is that true, or is it kind of across the board? Uh, I think it's across the board. It's funny. It's a, it's an interesting question we ask ourselves a lot, especially on the kind of SaaS provider space. Mm -hmm. Is like, who is your ideal customer? And what I've found it to be. It's very hard to say who the ideal customer is, but what we can say is that there's a style of work that makes someone well-suited for our product or we help enable, right? And that's, that style of work that you see is very much aligned to the DevOps and Agile discussion that we were having, but that style shows up in many places, right? It could show up equally at a uh, hypergrowth startup, which, which is they're essentially born into that. Mm -hmm. And then you see it at other, at, at other you know, kind of more... Um, like long running institutions where there are these enterprises, they are, they're forced to make these shifts to deliver new services, to go compete with those hyper growth startups. And they have to act in the way and they have to learn from those styles that have been, are they driving the hyper growth in order to continue to compete. And so, so I actually don't see it necessarily in one type of customer or another type of customer so much as there's a style that's prevailing throughout the industry. I see. Yeah. We're seeing it too. It maps exactly to what e is seeing too. Mm -hmm. We're seeing this uh, is such a, a, a much more efficient way to do things. It just took IT business a long time to come around to it, I think. Yeah. In yeah. some ways. Yeah. It's a lot of change. And, you know, the change, is, the change happens in multiple levels. I, like what I saw at first was people, which is a great start, going through the training for Agile, using the terminology, trying to change the organizations, but to really get the deep ingrained shift or movement to, as we t talked about to really make that happen in a, in a, like a fully transformed way. It takes time, right? It takes time to undo those, those constructs that were built before. Yeah. Well, we all get, you know, enmeshed in uh, our habits and our routines Yeah. and the apps that we know, and we know the shortcuts, you mm -hmm. know, and um, you know, don't give me new tools. I can do it just fine. Kind of, thing. Yeah. you know, but um, you know, we have to be agile of mind in addition to be using agile tools uh, yeah. to, to keep up, uh, it seems like. Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's especially true in our space too. Like we're, we're, we play in the observability space. Yeah. And one of the things I've observed over the years, I've been, I've been kind of in the enterprise software space for a number of years, and I've seen different incantations of what observability looks like today evolve. And I think we haven't quite made that final leap of, of how do we deliver capabilities to developers that um, that exist in the tools that they use today, right? We're still focused on this single pane of glass. We're still focused, which is basically an abstracted concept of a of a you know the historical knock, if you will. Yeah. And we're not yet presenting this information to the developers in their workflows, and so that's a bit out for us. We're really focused on on driving control and value and log management today. 
But I do think there is an opportunity to reimagine how observability is delivered to the developers and think about what that future state of observability really needs to look like down the road. That's great. Tucker Calloway, new CEO of, of uh, LogDNA, thank you very much for your time today on eSpeaks. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's been fun. And for everybody following along, thanks very much for staying with us and have a great rest of your eWeek. Thanks for joining us on eWeek eSpeaks. Go to eWeek.com to hear more conversations with IT thought leaders.